Yes, it's finally here. Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. You want a smaller, more portable, but almost equally capable version of the MX Master. Here it is, and it's called the MX Anywhere series. And after the latest release of its bigger brother, a long after actually, because plenty of time passed since then, we finally got a new successor, the MX Anywhere 3. Let's just jump right into it with what's actually different. First and foremost, the MX Anywhere 3 doesn't have a dedicated left and right scroll wheel anymore, but it does have the middle click function. What happened here is that Logitech implemented the max speed scroll technology, which is triggered both on a mechanical and software level and uses magnets to do that. Whereas the old was more raw and probably mechanical only, you would trigger it physically by pressing the middle scroll wheel, which is also probably why it didn't have the middle click. I also assume that's the reason why we don't now have the left and right scroll option, because it's most likely not doable on a technical level because of the max speed. Right behind it, we have the default wheel mode button, but that's not going to be necessary. In my opinion, you can remap it right away because you can use the smart shift option where the scroll wheel mode automatically changes based on how hard you've spun it. You can change the activation threshold, so to speak, and you can also set the scrolling force or to be more precise, scrolling resistance that is put out, which makes the scrolling more or less distinct between each step. Because of this, we also don't have that clacking sound of the scroll wheel when doing sudden movements. Since we are already doing some listening, here is how the switches sound. They basically feel the same, very firm and in place. Logitech's 4000 DPI dark field laser sensor is still present. It can be used on basically any surface, being it reflective, glass, smooth, pants, your face. It will perform the same. For what it's worth, I found it to be pretty precise for some casual gaming. The lift off distance is pretty high, but it doesn't suffer that much from acceleration or any other weird movement behaviors. The biggest obstacle is of course its size and shape, it's just not comfortable for such use, more for casual day-to-day -day work on the go, for which it's ideal and meant for in the first place, while it suits my palm grip style of use. Speaking of the shape, it's basically the same in its main outer lines, so to speak, very similar height, length and width-wise. The back portion is still slightly raised up, then it goes underneath itself, so the mouse almost looks like it's levitating. Other than this, it's still a very compact and sleek looking mouse, they did change its surface contours a bit on the side walls, but they still provide some additional grip, as well as this top plate where this scroll wheel is. The side back and forward buttons are a bit smaller and less pronounced, while they are also more pointing downwards, I feel I could get a better hold of the back button on the 2S model, plus they feel a bit firmer now. On the other hand, I still love how the right and left mouse clicks are basically made out of this seamless one piece, it's not a separate part, just as on the old one, but now it's even more unifying, especially with this white model, where we don't have different color framing. Talking about color, there will be three different colors to choose from, besides this white and regular black and gray which we usually see, we'll also have a pink one to go for, probably instead of that bluish teal. What is also different is that the MX Anywhere 3 lost some weight, it's almost 10 grams lighter, you can just slightly feel that difference when using it. I don't know how they've achieved that, if the max speed system is lighter than the older one, maybe shaved it somewhere in the construction itself, or they used a different battery. Speaking of that, the declared battery life is set at 70 days, this can of course differ depending on the connection type, being it the wireless connection or its wireless dongle, or the Bluetooth one, but based on this I assume they've used the same 500mAh battery size, since the Anywhere 2S model has the same battery life. I couldn't test this claim as I didn't have the mouse for such a long time period, but based on what I managed to squeeze into it charge-wise, I would guess that it's similar. Adding on to this, we have a USB Type-C connection for charging and a cable that comes with it, 
which is an upgrade from the previous generation. Closing off the topic of connections, the MX Anywhere 3 will also support macOS and iPadOS. Speaking of the Bluetooth, same as with the MX Anywhere 2S model, you can switch between three different devices using a dedicated button below the mouse, and that paired with the Logitech Flow feature can be really handy. Getting back to the topic of profiles, as with other MX series mice models, with the MX Anywhere 3, it's also possible to set up its shortcuts and behavior based around a specific app which you are using. Logitech already preloaded some profiles for the most common ones, like Office and Adobe Ecosystem, but you can dial that to your liking through Logitech's option software utility even more. It automatically recognizes the app that you are using and switches everything accordingly. Since I'm talking about Logitech's option utility, here you can also check your battery level, I just wish they put some kind of percentage readout, because this feels more like a guesstimation, you can also play with settings for some of the features which I've mentioned earlier, and of course change the pointer speed, also although it doesn't have horizontal scroll option, there's a software function for that, as well as of course remapping what buttons do, so nothing that we haven't seen before, still very adjustable and flexible enough for majority of users who plan to use this kind of mouse. When you draw the line old on surface, it doesn't seem like a lot has changed, in some way that's true, Logitech did make a few steps into the right direction and improve the ongoing model by that much. Yes, if you are an existing user, maybe there's not that much sense in upgrading from its predecessor, unless you are really annoyed by not having that middle click for example, but newcomers who are in search for a really capable mouse of this format can go for its successor without any doubt. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, please take a second to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps a lot, and if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video. And until then, catch you later guys!